And once again, we have the pleasure and the privilege to have a dialogue with Ms. Sylvia Lemus from the county who comes over and talks with us about um, you know, COVID and the vaccine and testing. And so if you could start us off today mm -hmm with just the basics, what are the numbers looking like? Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you for having me here today. So as of yesterday, as uh, the numbers are that we now have 26,306 confirmed cases, which is about 56 extra, uh, 56 cases additional in the last 24 hours. So the numbers are coming down a little bit, but um, we still have a, a you know an, an issue here in Sonoma County. We have a total, unfortunately, of 267 deaths, um, and we continue to do testing here in Sonoma County. Um, a few weeks ago, you know, the governor lifted the state home order. So we returned back to the, the California's blueprint for a safer economy, which puts us back into the purple tier. Like the majority of the state, I think, is in the purple tier right now. Um, but what, what that means is we go back to the data that that um, plan kind of offers us. So the rate of new daily cases uh, per 100,000 population is 27.2. It needs to be less than seven to move to the, to the, to the red tier, which is a less restrictive tier. Um, but just to let you know, for the schools, it should be 20, the state has said that if you have 25 per 100,000 of new cases, then they'll consider um, a, a plan reopening for local schools. So that's something that's in the works, you know, kind of that we can look forward to. Um, testing positivity rate right now is at 6.5%. It must be less than 8% to move into the red tier. And the equity metric testing positivity is 10.8. It needs to be less than 8% for us to be able to move into the red tier. So again, it all has to be uh, within, you know, uh, under the numbers. So we can't move into the red tier until all of our um, numbers are below the required um, um, uh, data that they give us. So um, that's where we're at in the numbers right now. You know, it's still a lot of work to do. It's a little lower, but we are kind of slowly getting there. Definitely. And so just a reminder to people, please stay safe. We know you've been doing this for months and months and months. Um, we just have a little bit more to go. And I know in a second, we're gonna be talking about vaccination, um, but what can you tell us about testing? I know that, uh, mm -hmm. again, you have been opening other spaces, you have mm -hmm. pop-up locations, you're trying to make it as accessible mm -hmm. as possible. What can you mm -hmm. tell us about testing? Yes, testing is very important, Rafael. One of the reasons is that the more testing that the county does, the state does a calculation so that it can lower our new cases per 100,000. So that means that it'll help us to kind of move into some less restrictive tiers. So testing is really important. So whether you have symptoms or not, you know, and even if you've been tested before, we ask you to continue getting tested and encourage everyone else around you. We have a lot of great um, testing opportunities. We've expanded them throughout the county. Um, so first of all, you know, contact your healthcare uh, provider if you have one or a clinic locally for testing. Otherwise, we have OptumServe in Windsor, Petaluma, Santa Rosa, uh, Project Baseline, uh, which is a state collaborative in Santa Rosa. And we have pop-up testing with all of our health clinics in Cloverdale, Hillsburg, Santa Rosa, um, Sebastopol. And um, pop-up testing in, in neighborhood, you know, all along the 101 corridor. Um, and Curative also has testing around Park in Santa Rosa. So I know it can be a little confusing, but and there's testing everywhere. So we recommend people can go on to uh, Sonoma um, SoCoEmergency.org, and then there's a, uh, a tab on there for Get Tested, and it has calendars and links to where you can go to make an appointment and go for testing. So we're still continuing to do the pop-up testing um, uh, throughout every day of the week. For example, Mondays, Alexander Valley Healthcare, and also Monday, Alianza Medical Center in Hillsburg. On Tuesdays, Petaluma Health Center in Ronan Park. In Wednesdays, Sonoma Valley Community Health has testing. On Thursdays, uh, Santa Rosa Community Health Center and West County Community Health has testing. And there's also every Friday at Andy's Unity Park all day from 9 to 4, there's testing except for lunch hour. And every Monday, um, uh, at Roseland Library, there's testing from nine to four again. So um, for those, uh, for Andy's Unity Park and Roseland Library, uh, you you do need to kind of, um, you can go in there or or you can also call the 565-4667, 565-4667 hotline or make an appointment online um, at socoemergency.org um, for testing at any of those sites. And we just ask you to please continue getting testing, whether you have symptoms or not, and encourage others to do so as well. Yeah, let us remember that uh, mm -hmm. according to the research, four mm -hmm. out of every 10 people who have the virus don't even know they have it, so they continue mm -hmm. to spread it. So if we get tested, then the uh, long term will be better off because less people get sick. Um, and with that, I would like to move uh, to vaccination. Mm -hmm. I know that the, you know there's a long process that you've all been working on, um, but one of the things that for sure at some point you can address it 
is the importance of when are essential workers who work in, let's say, grocery stores or restaurants, or perhaps uh, people who work in the fields, when are they going to get their chance? I know that we had said February was likely the time that they were going to do it. What can you tell us? Yes. So, yes, about the testing um, here at the county, we have um, um, administered a total of 50,000 532 uh, tests, uh, vaccine doses since December when we started doing the, the, vac the vaccinations. So we receive around 6,000 average of doses every week from the state. This week we received 7,400 and we hope with the new administration that they can expand the testing as we prepare to expand sites for vaccination, I'm sorry, not testing, vaccination, I'm getting confused. So um, we have started with the 75 uh, and up and older category, the senior population, 75 and older. And one of the reasons is because of the deaths, there are 60% of the deaths um, from COVID. So they're a very vulnerable population. So um, a few weeks ago, we started outreaching uh, specifically to agencies that work with the vulnerable 75 population to invite them. And what happened is that we have uh, OptumServe, which is a testing that we use their link to register people to get the vaccination. And, um, it, and it's a site that's used statewide. And so other counties allow 65 and older, but here in Sonoma County, we decided to focus um, on 75 and older. So there was some confusion around that, that we, you know, and there was some information and decisions that were made last year to still focus on 75 and older. Um, and one of the reasons, like I said, we have an older population, um, um, we have 500,000 in uh, residents in, in Sonoma County and 25% or 103,000 are 65 and older. So it's a very high older population we have in Sonoma County. So it's gonna take us time to kind of get through all the different um, age phases. Um, so we are, like I said, right now focusing on 75 and older. Next week, we're going to the 70 and older. And then in the next few weeks, we'll go to some of the other categories. So um, you talked about ag workers, um, field farm workers and some food workers. Um, people that are in the food industry. So they will also, we'll have more information coming to you real soon, like in two or three weeks, because there is some planning right now around getting our essential workers, um, those categories uh, vaccinated, as well as teachers. Um, so that is coming up. We're still in the planning process. We're not sure uh, because we're trying to, and figure out how we're going to kind of roll out that kind of uh, the vaccination for those groups. We are uh, working on setting up mass vaccination sites, for example, at the fairgrounds at Webb, at Jim and Windsor, uh, a place in Sonoma Valley in West County, at the JC uh, in Petaluma at their at the gym, um, so we can have more space to to administer the vaccine. But we're also working with our partners like the clinics that um, we distribute some of the vaccine to to also include some of the different categories that we're going to be rolling out to. So one of the things that so we ask is for patients, you know, because uh, we still have a supply and demand, and we're hoping, like I said, that it'll inc that our 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 um, our incoming vaccinations will, will increase and that way we can do more vaccinations. And we're trying to gear up our plans um, to do that. Definitely. And mm -hmm. um, the last thing here is mm -hmm. uh, in regards to our uh, field workers, for example, mm -hmm. many of them, and the same thing, we have that same issue with uh, people who are 65 or 70 or 75 who don't know how to use a computer or maybe mm -hmm. don't know how to read, don't know how to write. How is that being addressed by the county? Mm -hmm. We are specifically working on strategizing our plans this week. And we feel that our trusted messengers, which is our organizations that we work with that are already on the ground working with these uh, populations, you know, are, are going to be uh, some organization we work with to help us to get the message out to some of these um, um, communities and, and categories and uh, people, you know, to help us to get out the message out and to even help them to um, to be able to do the vaccine. We've been kind of mulling around different ideas that maybe doing like the pop-up testing, maybe pop-up vaccines in some of these communities, rural communities, to be able to reach farm workers or essential workers. And so we're still kind of working on these plans, but we will have a plan so we can reach because you know equity is important. And I know that some of us can stay home and work, but our essential workers cannot, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, we're trying to reach all these populations because you know like you said the state gives us directive but we're trying to apply equity to our vaccination rollout at the same time definitely and with that i want to thank you i want to be respectful of your time i want to thank you for being with us yet again and i look forward to next week's uh, update when i hope we have more information specifically about how we are going to make sure this is an equitable process for the whole community
Thank you okay. to Ms. Silvia Lemons for taking the Thank time. Thank you. Thank you, Rafael. Okay.